Matthew chapter 25, a parable about ten virgins. At the time my coming draws near, heaven's kingdom realm can be compared to ten maidens who took their oil lamps and went outside to meet the bridegroom and his bride. Five of them were foolish and ill-prepared, for they took no extra oil for their lamps. Five of them were wise and sensible, for they took flasks of olive oil with their lamps. When the bridegroom didn't come when they expected, they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. Then suddenly, in the middle of the night, they were awakened by the shout, Get up! The bridegroom is here! Come out and have an encounter with him! So all the girls got up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish ones were running out of oil. So they said to the five wise ones, Share your oil with us, because our lamps are going out. We can't, they replied. We don't have enough for all of us. You'll have to go and buy some for yourselves. While the five girls were out buying oil, the bridegroom appeared. Those who were ready and waiting were escorted inside with him and the wedding party to enjoy the feast. And then the door was locked. Later, the five foolish girls came running up to the door and pleaded, Lord, Lord, let us come in. But he called back, Go away. Do I know you? I can assure you, I don't even know you. That is the reason you should always stay awake and be alert, because you don't know the day or hour when the bridegroom will appear. A parable about financial stewardship. Again, heaven's kingdom realm is like the wealthy man who went on a long journey and summoned all his trusted servants and assigned his financial management over to them. Before he left on his journey, he entrusted a bag of 5,000 gold coins to one of his servants, to another a bag of 2,000 gold coins, and to the third a bag of 1,000 gold coins, each according to his ability to manage. The one entrusted with 5,000 gold coins immediately went out and traded with the money, and he doubled his investment. In the same way, the one who was entrusted with 2,000 gold coins traded with the sum and likewise doubled his investment. But the one who had been entrusted with 1,000 gold coins dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After much time had passed, the master returned to settle accounts with his servants. The one who was entrusted with 5,000 gold coins came and brought 10,000, saying, See, I have doubled your money. Commending his servant, the master replied, You have done well, and proven yourself to be my loyal and trustworthy servant. Because you have been a faithful steward to manage a small sum, now I will put you in charge of much, much more. You will experience the delight of your master who will say to you, Come, celebrate with me. Then the one who had been entrusted with 2,000 gold coins came in and said, See, my master, I have double what you have entrusted to me. Commending his servant, the master replied, You have done well and proven yourself to be my loyal and trustworthy servant. Because you were faithful to manage a small sum, now I will put you in charge of much, much more. You will experience the delight of your master who will say to you, Come, celebrate with me. Then the one who had been entrusted with 1,000 gold coins came to his master and said, Look, sir, I know that you are a hard man to please, and you're a shrewd and ruthless businessman who grows rich on the backs of others. I was afraid of you, so I went and hid your money and buried it in the ground. But here it is. Take it. It's yours. Angered by what he heard, the master said to him, You're an untrustworthy and lazy servant. If you knew I was a shrewd and ruthless businessman who always makes a profit, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? Then I would have received it all back with interest when I returned. But because you were unfaithful, 
I will take the 1,000 gold coins and give them to the one who has 10,000. For the one who has will be given more until he overflows with abundance. And the one with hardly anything, even what little he has, will be taken from him. Then the master said to his other servants, Now throw that good-for-nothing servant far away from me into the outer darkness, where there will be great misery and anguish. The Judgment of the Multitudes When the Son of Man appears in his majestic glory with all his angels by his side, he will take his seat on the throne of splendor, and all the nations will be gathered together before him. And like a shepherd who separates the sheep from the goats, he will separate all the people. The sheep he will put on his right side, and the goats on his left. Then the king will turn to those on his right and say, You have a special place in my father's heart. Come and experience the full inheritance of the kingdom realm that has been destined for you from before the foundation of the world. For when you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you found me thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And when I had no place to stay, you invited me in. And when I was poorly clothed, you covered me. When I was sick, you tenderly cared for me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. Then the godly will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty and give you food and something to drink? When did we see you with no place to stay and invite you in? When did we see you poorly clothed and cover you? When did we see you sick and tenderly cared for you or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Don't you know? When you cared for the one of the least important of these, my little ones, my true brothers and sisters, you demonstrated love for me. Then those on his left, the king will say, Leave me, for you are under the curse of eternal fire that has been destined for the devil and all his demons. For when you saw me hungry, you refused to give me food. And when you saw me thirsty, you refused to give me something to drink. I had no place to stay, and you refused to take me in as your guest. When you saw me poorly clothed, you closed your hearts and would not cover me. When you saw that I was sick, you didn't lift a finger to help me. And when I was imprisoned, you never came to visit me. And then those on his left will say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty and not give you food or something to drink? When did we see you homeless or poorly clothed? When did we see you sick and not help you, or in prison and not visit you? Then he will answer them, Don't you know? When you refuse to help one of the least important among these my little ones, my true brothers and sisters, you refuse to help and honor me. And they will depart from his presence and go into eternal punishment. But the godly and beloved sheep will enter into eternal bliss.